As a professor of inclusive education, the main question for me is always how can we support teachers to deal with the diversity of their students? One way to do it is using open education resources. Open education resources are materials like textbooks or videos or question sets uh, that can be used and adapted to the needs of the student. One country that is far ahead with open education resources is Norway. In 2006 they started uh, to supply infrastructure and computers to the upper secondary schools in Norway. And then they wondered, okay, we somehow need content that we can actually use with those computers. So they created a platform called NDLA. Since then, each year 20% of the schoolbook money goes to NDLA to produce open education resources. What are the conclusions of those 13 years of experience with stately funded open education resources? Basically what I'm interested in was uh, the perspective of different uh, kind of stakeholders. On the one hand the professionals that are working with NDLA in various positions and on the other hand it's uh, the companies who work together with NDLA and also the perspective of the school book publishers who are completely against NDLA. What I did was I called up the boss of NDLA and asked him if I could do interviews with them and he said well yeah you could do that but we are a virtual organization so we are scattered all across Norway that reach from Kristiansand in the south to Tromsø in the north. I did in-person interviews with uh, 13 people overall. The main topics were like what about the licensing issues, what about the funding, what about uh, sustainability questions, and what are actually their pedagogical approaches as well. One of the key findings of my study was that we have actually five areas where other countries can build on the experiences of NDLA. The most important part about the structures is the question of funding. So NDLA gets 20% of the schoolbook money in Norway. And what they are doing is they are writing public tenders for the market. So they are giving back 70% of the schoolbook money to the market. So overall it's 94% of the schoolbook money still available to the market. One other question would be, is it illegal state aid? The publishers in Norway sued NDLA and they went before the EFTA court. The EFTA court decided, no, it's not a legal state aid for NDLA. The most important thing about the strategies uh, NDLA uses is that they use methods of design thinking and they look at the needs of their users. So what are their users? Their users are actually the teachers, but not only the teachers, but also the student. And they said, well, we have to put the student in the center of our focus. They actually created pilot schools they work together with. And every time they create something new, a new form of material, they first go to the pilot school and test it with the students. And then they go out and produce more of them. What is important from the software side? NLA started using a content management system like Drupal for their software and they created plug-in after plug-in after plug-in and everything got so slow. And then they realized, well, we can't use a traditional content management system for a learning management platform. So what they did was they created a new platform after 10 years of experience. And the cool thing about that is they actually give it away for free to everyone who wants it. It's available on GitHub and it's already multilingual, so it's even easier to build on. It's uh, licensed on a Creative Commons license, CC BY or CC BY SA, and uh, it's even quite easy to build on, so you can create local corporations with museums or universities, 
and create your own content and build on those materials from NDLA. For us working in education, the pedagogical considerations are also very important. NDLA created a pedagogical platform, which is basically a document that combines their common values uh, of how they want to create materials for learning. One important part is be as open as possible. So NDLA requires no login, no download, no print. So all that is there can be used online. And the other important thing is always think about what is best for learning and not what is best for business. Thanks to Norway, we have 13 years of experiences with state-funded open education resources. Now, thanks to my research, other countries can benefit from that and they don't have to reinvent the wheel. For example, in Germany, if we would use one euro per student per subject, that would be seven million euros that can be used to create materials that can be used for teaching in the digital world. And not only teaching in the digital world, but at the same time being able to adapt those materials to the needs of the student. One important part is how can we motivate other countries to use a platform like NDLA to support inclusive education. So one task I'm currently working on is to condense the findings from the research in Norway and uh, convince policy makers to build on those experiences. A second project regarding inclusive open education resources that we are working on is an online dictionary for young children and teenagers. We include topics and words that are actually relevant for them and to address the needs of students with cognitive impairments we also include images.